Good morning, dear organizers, speakers, and colleagues. My name is George Tersenov, and here is my colleague, Alexander Tersenov, who's actually the second speaker. We are residents of Tumen State Medical University, and it's such an honor for us to participate in this conference. And on behalf of our research group, we are glad to share with you the results of our study, analysis of platelet indices and lipid parameters in HIV-positive patients with cerebral stroke. As we all know, HIV infection remains one of the world's most significant public health challenges, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. According to WHO, annually, 630,000 people die from HIV-related causes. Meanwhile, in the structure of HIV-associated conditions, cerebrovascular accidents account for from 1 to 5% of all lesions of nervous system. In addition to the traditional risk factors of the cerebrovascular accidents, such as arterial hypertension, smoking, diabetes mellitus, and hypolipidemia, HIV infection being a specific risk factor increases the probability of cerebral vascular accidents. This may be caused either by direct effect of the virus on hemostasis and lipid metabolism or indirect effect of antiretroviral drugs that, according to some authors, may affect lipid profile and blood glucose level, what increases the risk of stroke. Unfortunately, the available information does not allow evaluating the risk of developing cerebrovascular accidents resulting from morphofunctional changes of platelets or vascular atherosclerosis in HIV-positive patients. That is why we decided to identify and then analyze changes in platelet parameters and lipid profile of HIV-infected patients with stroke. In this regard, we conducted two independent studies. As you can see, in the first one, to identify changes in platelets, we examined 79 HIV-positive patients with ischemic and 33 HIV-positive patients with hemorrhagic stroke who received treatment in hospitals of the Tumen region from 2014s to 2020s. Blood sampling was carried out on the day of patient's admission. To evaluate blood parameters, we used the analyzer Sysmex XE2100, Japan. The analyzed parameters included number of platelets and several indices such as mean platelet volume, platelet distribution wise, platelet creed, and platelet large cell ratio. The control group consisted of 118 HIV negative patients. To study the specific features of lipid profile, 77 patients with ischemic stroke and 32 patients with hemorrhagic stroke and comorbid HIV infection were examined during the admission in hospitals of the Tumen region from 2015 to 2020. Studying of lipid profile was carried out using beckman coulter AU480 analyzer, USA. This time, the analyzed parameters included levels of total cholesterol, low-density lipoproteins, high-density lipoproteins, and triglycerides. In addition, we calculated the atherogenic index of plasma. The control group consisted of 116 patients. And now we would like to present the results of our research. They are displayed on the next few slides within tables. Here you can see the changes of platelet parameters that were registered. First of all, there was a significant decrease in the number of platelets, in average on 34.3% among patients with hemorrhages and HIV infection. Among patients with ischemic stroke, this decrease was less pronounced. In addition, we saw a significant decrease in platelet creed among patients with intracranial hemorrhages, while it did not change markedly among patients with cerebral infarction. Evaluation of other platelet parameters didn't identify significant differences between patients in experimental and control groups. The coefficient of giant platelets prevailed by one and a half times in patients with hemorrhages associated with HIV infection, which turned out to be beyond the statistical significance. Speaking of lipid profile, as you can see, patients with HIV infection had lower levels of total cholesterol in blood. 
the average values of this parameter were almost the same in both patients with ischemic stroke and intracranial hemorrhages. Besides that, the level of low-density lipoproteins was found to decrease among HIV-positive patients with cerebral infarction in comparison to the same patients in control group. In patients with hemorrhagic stroke, this parameter was also lower, but the difference was not statistically significant. It should be emphasized that the level of high-density lipoproteins in the experimental groups did not differ significantly from the control group. During the study, it was revealed that HIV-infected patients with intracranial hemorrhages had a slightly higher content of triglycerides in blood in comparison with the control group. However, these differences were not significant. Among patients with ischemic stroke and associated HIV infection, the level of triglycerides did not exceed the values of this indicator in the control group. In addition, to evaluate the risk of atherogenicity, we also used a specialized atherogenic coefficient that reflect the ratio of atherogenic to anti-atherogenic lipoproteins. Among patients with ischemic stroke, this index was significantly lower than in control group, while in the group with intracranial hemorrhage, it didn't differ a lot. According to ultrasound imaging of the brachiocephalic arteries, 48.3% of patients with strokes had the signs of atherosclerosis of the carotid system. Among patients with ischemic stroke and HIV infection, these signs were found in 62%, while in the group with intracranial hemorrhages, this phenomena was found less frequently, just in 24.2% of cases. These were just numbers, but now we would like to focus on the main conclusions of this research that were previously underrated. The presence of HIV infection leads to a more pronounced decrease in the number of platelets and platelet creed among patients with an acute phase of hemorrhagic stroke than in patients with cerebral infarction. It indicates that activation of hemostasis in these patients is more pronounced. At the same time, intracranial hemorrhage among HIV-positive patients is characterized by a greater number of platelets with high volume. Their level grew by one and a half times, what is beyond the statistical significance. The main mechanism of this phenomenon is the intensification of platelets formation in bone marrow in response to their increased consumption in hemostasis processes. Elevation of this value, PLCR, means that these patients have a high prothrombotic potential, but enhances the risk of blood clots, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and angiopathy. And of course, it was revealed that patients with ischemic stroke associated with HIV infection have a specific type of dyslipidemia characterized by a decrease in the level of total cholesterol and lipoproteins. However, in patients with hemorrhagic stroke, only a total cholesterol reduction was noticed. In fact, the obtained results show that regardless of the type of stroke, patients with HIV infection have lower levels of total cholesterol and low-density lipoproteins in blood, and that makes it possible to presume that the state of lipid metabolism in HIV-infected patients with ischemic stroke indicates a lower probability of atherosclerotic genesis of an acute cerebrovascular disease. Moreover, according to the clinical guidelines for the diagnosis of lipid disorders, the registered high-density lipoproteins level in patients with HIV infection and stroke also indicates a low risk of vascular events. And last but not least, the increased risk of cardiovascular diseases among people with HIV infection apparently is not induced by intensified atherosclerosis. We would like to express our greatest acknowledgements to our research group and to Beyond Sciences Initiative for this opportunity. And we would be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much for your attention.